Before I bought this 2005 E55 AMG wagon sight unseen from Japan, I did a ton of research. I wanted to make sure it was going to be a reliable daily driver for myself to take my son to daycare and go get groceries because who doesn't need a 500 horsepower Mercedes wagon from the 2000s to take your kid to daycare. So in this video, I'm gonna give you all my research and my personal experience over the last two years with it. But in this video, I'm actually gonna be focusing on the negatives, the cons, the bad stuff to look out for with an E55 AMG wagon purchase. This video will be a lot shorter than all the positives because I'm actually doing a completely separate video on why I bought this and the good stuff and everything I love about that. So subscribe now so that you don't miss that video. And that'll also explain the whole reason why I didn't even consider buying some kind of equivalently priced brand new SUV or CUV or anything like that. Oh, and if you've already been a subscriber of mine, you're probably noticing that the SL500 is usually parked here. Well, it's kind of not at my house anymore. It's at the shop getting an issue dealt with, which I will probably detail in a separate video as long as I have time to film it because it could be a major problem or it could be a fairly minor problem. But long story short, I think the transmission has to come out. Anyways, this is about the E55 AMG wagon. I imported it with eClection Auto and I would highly recommend his services. This is not an ad for him by any means, but I had such a great experience dealing with him. Part of the deal was that when the car landed and the price that I paid, it would be certified. So any issues that came up when the car arrived would be dealt with, which is exactly what I wanted considering I had never driven this car or even seen it. Allow me to pull up a chair here because it's story time. So when this car arrived, it was inspected and it turns out it had a couple issues, nothing to be unexpected for a car with 165,000 kilometers or about 100,000 miles. So if you're not that familiar with the E55 AMG or the wagon, they actually came with air suspension as mine does. I've got an aftermarket controller, which I have dumped for parking mode because it looks super sick. However, I did just have to replace the air springs or the air bags. So watch that video. That's a completely separate video. That was not part of the inspection. But one thing that we noticed during the inspection when I first bought the car is that the struts, which are separate from the springs, were a little bit moist. So a collection auto took care of that. However, sourcing those for the wagon, because I think mine has some kind of sport suspension and self-leveling option, I believe, there was like one in the world. So wagon parts are harder to come by than sedan parts. So front end components are a lot easier to get because they're the same. Rear end components, and let's not even get into the body stuff, a lot more difficult because they're wagon specific and then AMG specific. So they didn't make that many wagons. Now we were able to source them. It just took a little bit longer and then we replaced them. Oh, and by the way, if the dirt on the wheels and the whole body is bothering you, too bad. This is actually a daily driver of mine. I legitimately drive this basically every single day. So um, leave a comment if you want me to clean it because I know you probably do. Don't worry, it's already ceramic coated and it's already been polished up last year. Anyways, the engine and transmission mounts are fluid filled. Turns out if they're fluid filled, they'd have a tendency to leak out over time, over mileage. So that's what happened here. Fluid filled mounts help with NVH or noise vibration harshness. So Mercedes thought that, you know, people wanted a more comfortable ride and they got that. However, that is a wear and tear item that you will have to replace and I had to replace. Oh, and by the way, it's not just Mercedes. This also has fluid filled mounts, which I also had to replace. The next thing that was leaking, the valve cover gaskets on both sides. Super common on these E55 AMGs. And in case you didn't know, Mercedes has a service position for the hood to make it a lot easier to work on. It's almost like they know you're gonna have to fix it at one point. Don't worry, it's not a big deal. Those are actually super cheap to replace. The next thing we had to take care of was replacing the oil pan. I know you're thinking, Jacob, that's gotta be so expensive. It was only about 100, 150 bucks. The part was really cheap and fairly easy to replace. They do have a tendency to leak. Mine actually did not leak. However, the previous owner in Japan, I guess on the last oil change or something, stripped the drain plug. So we replaced the whole thing. And no, I can't show you because it's underneath and I don't have a hoist. Seems like this is a common problem. Maybe I should get a hoist one day. And finally, the last thing that Eclection Auto took care of during the initial inspection were the outer tie rods. Now that's not an E55 specific item, but it's just a common wear and tear item for cars over 100,000 miles. So no big deal. So then on my tab, I wanted to give it a fresh start with all new fluids. So we replaced the oil, the coolant, the transmission fluid, the rear diff. We did not replace the supercharger fluid. The fluid technically does not ever need to be replaced. It's one of those like lifetime fluids. Nobody at Mercedes has like a service interval, I don't think for these. 
but the supercharger is bolted right here and then there is a drain plug down there. It's a bit tricky, but it's not too hard. It actually uses like an aviation oil that's literally meant for turbines and uh, airplanes. I will probably do it myself one day. There's actually a really good tutorial from uh, AMG Meister, shout out him on YouTube. He actually helped me a lot. I had a lot of questions with this car. So yeah, that's about it. Oh, and I also replaced the air filters myself. Those were super easy. I bought those from Mercedes. I just wanted the OEM ones. Another big shout out to Alex from Legit Street Cars. He put me in touch with VRP Speed to take care of a maintenance item. So there's an intercooler pump on these and they have a tendency to fail. There's an updated version of that one. So it's the Bosch 010. That's the one that everybody puts in here for an OEM perspective. So I had that done. Uh, I restrained myself from doing any modifications, but I'll save the modifications and stuff for the other video. These the engines do suffer from heat soak. That is probably the major thing that could go wrong with these is that this has a really cool system for the supercharger pulley. It's a clutched pulley. So here, let me just remove this again. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Um, so this is the pulley for the supercharger. Now it's clutched. What that means is that it's freely spinning when you're below a certain load or RPM. When you floor it, that's when the supercharger actually starts to spin. It's a really cool design to save on fuel economy and stuff. You do feel it and sometimes the belt does chirp. So Mercedes customers apparently complain about that, but I'm not a typical Mercedes customer. I bought these like old cars and stuff. And I love this kind of stuff. Now I didn't upgrade the pulley to make the car faster, but again, I'm gonna save that stuff for the other video. So that's it in terms of my personal list of things that I've done, some of which are common problems, some of which I've done as preventative maintenance. Now I'm gonna give you the stuff that could go wrong, but hasn't gone wrong on mine yet, at least not fully. The rear main seal, they could leak, and mine has a very slow leak, so I haven't bothered to fix it yet, but it's one of those things that I will have to replace. Problem is you have to take off the transmission to replace it, the actual parts, are very inexpensive. It's all the labor to take off the transmission and everything to do that. So that's one of those things that I will have to do. So if you do see a leak at the bottom of the car, if it's parked or just, you know, scattered around the back of the engine, it's a thing you will have to do. Speaking of the transmission, not a big deal, but there is a potential for the transmission conductor plate to need replacement. It's like around $200, not a big deal, but something to look at. The SBC system, AKA Sensotronic brake controller, something like that. Anyways, it's basically a brake by wire system, like a first generation early one. So it did have a tendency to fail. It does have a backup, but these were actually recalled because of problems. And obviously it's a major safety hazard if you don't have brakes. So there is a, I think 15 year warranty in Mercedes Canada or for Mercedes Canada. And then Mercedes USA has a 25 year warranty. So if yours fails, you're still good. I have heard of like goodwill gestures from Mercedes dealers, just replacing them kind of, you know, out of warranty because these cars are getting a little bit older because after all it is a brake system and you kind of need that. If you have to replace it out of warranty, out of pocket, I think it's pretty expensive, maybe around 1500 to $2,000. Like that part is not cheap and there's no aftermarket version of that. So you have to buy that from Mercedes. And finally, back to the back of the car, there is actually an issue with the fuel sending unit. There was not a recall, but it was an extended warranty. So what happens is there's a gas smell from the outside of the car because the uh, pump, I guess, tends to leak. And it's actually located uh, right under here, under the rear seats. Yes, as you can see my child seat because, and toys and cars and whatnot, uh, cause I do daily drive this, but you have to apparently, if Mercedes does it, they replace the entire fuel tank. But if you do it aftermarket yourself for much cheaper, you replace, I think both the in-tank uh, pumps. I'm getting a slight gas smell lately, so that might be something that I'll do in a separate video if I do get that address, but I'm hoping I don't have to, but I might actually have to because I definitely don't want this thing to catch fire. So that's pretty much it. Those are the most common problems that I could find in all my research. I'm sure there's more problems. I'm sure things have gotten worse for many other people. I'm sure some of these engines have blown because I've actually seen that online. A lot of those are modified. I'm sure it happened to stock ones. I've seen some problems with the O-rings in the uh, oil pumps. But again, it's not like a major problem that every single one's blowing up. It's just here and there. So let me know in the comments below what you guys have seen, but from all my research, that's basically it. So sure, the fuel could leak and maybe it'll catch fire and explode, probably not. The brakes could go. I'm sure it's probably not that serious of a problem. Honestly, 
I wouldn't worry about it. This is why I bought this car. I think it's gonna be a great daily driver and it has been. It's gonna need some problems. It is a mid 2000s Mercedes with 500 horsepower. So you can't really ask for the most reliable experience. But from what I've had, again, just during my experience, I've done oil changes. And outside of that, I've only had to replace the rear airbags. We'll see if I have to replace those uh, fuel pumps. We'll see if I do the rear main seal, but nothing to be unexpected for a car of this age with this horsepower, supercharged rear wheel drive V8. Like you can't really ask for more. So thanks for watching this video. Leave a comment below and definitely don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video where I will detail all the best parts of this car and then show you my new wheels, which I've had last year, but I got refinished. Trust me, they're, they're very nice. Thanks for watching.